In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint a room. So I'm gonna be going over everything from prepping the walls, to cutting in the walls, to rolling the whole nine yards. So if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So the first thing we need to do is prep the walls. So let's get started. This is the room that I'm gonna be painting in this video. It's a 16 by 16 newly constructed room. So how you would paint this room is very similar to how you would paint an older house, but I wanted to show you a tour of it before we get started. So the biggest difference when it comes to painting a new construction house versus a house that's already built is the flooring. As you can see, I got subfloor on the floor instead of actual flooring, so I don't have to worry about preserving the flooring when I'm painting. So that's a big benefit to new construction versus an older house. But if you do have an older house you're trying to paint, be sure to put down canvas or plastic first. So that way if you spill paint, you don't ruin your flooring. Very important. And another thing with a new construction house, you'll notice the outlet covers are not on yet. So you don't have to worry about taking them off. But if you're in an older house that you're trying to paint, be sure to remove any covers and tape around trims before you start painting. All right, so now that that's out of the way, the next thing I'm gonna do is I got drywall mud here and I'm gonna go through and inspect the walls before I remove the dust to be sure all the drywall is totally finished and it's free of any defects. So I'm gonna do that first. So let me show you how to patch any small pinholes or anything if you run into that. Whenever you run into a nail in the wall like this that was used to hang pictures or whatnot, go ahead and remove it. Just take a hammer and pull it out and then you're gonna be left with this little hole to fill. So all you gotta do is take just a wee little bit of drywall mud and push it into that hole. After you apply the drywall mud or spackling, let it dry all the way. It typically I wait about 24 hours and then just take a sanding block and sand it until it's smooth as the rest of the wall. So it shouldn't take too much to get that little bit of mud off and now you're ready to paint right over that. The next step is to get the dust off the ceilings and off the walls. And in order to do that, I use a dust mop and I always wear a dust mask or a respirator. This is the respirator I typically wear, but simple dust mask will be fine. You just don't wanna breathe in all the dust while you're removing it from the walls. And I always start from the ceilings and work my way down to the walls and I'll show you my process in doing that. In order to do the ceiling, go ahead and take your dust mop and just go back and forth across it until you're removed all the dust and cobwebs. Next, I'm gonna show you how to get the dust off the walls using a dust mop. And I'm not wearing a mask right now, it's so you can clearly hear what I'm saying, but I usually would have my mask on while I'm doing this. So go ahead and put your dust mop in the top corner and go ahead and push it tight into the edge where the ceiling and wall meet so that way you can get all the cobwebs and dust out. And then once you get to the edge, just push the dust all down to the floor and then step down another foot or two and do the same thing, go straight across, and then once you get to the corner, push it down. And now that the wall is bulkly cleaned, I'm gonna show you how to get the dust out of the corners. The dust mop works great for getting the bulk square footage of the walls and ceilings dusted off, but when it comes to getting into the corners where the ceilings and walls meet, it's very difficult to get in there with a dust mop. So whether it's a new construction house or an older house, you typically would wanna go back through with some kind of brush just to make sure these corners are clean. So I just go ahead and touch up into the corner and swipe away to make sure all the excess dust is out. Now a new construction house is gonna have way more dust in those corners just from all the dust from the drywall. But it's something you wanna to do to give you a good paint job. We started cleaning the ceilings, then we went to the walls. Now it's time to address the floor. And the reason why we go in that order is because the dust particles fall down as we go. And now they all collected on the floor and we need to shop back them up or use a regular vacuum. And also if it's a new construction house, you wanna make sure you clean out the outlets and switches anywhere they were cut out because there's gonna be a lot of dust collected inside those boxes. And also while you're rolling your roller over them, they'll pick up the loose particles. So I highly recommend cleaning those out really well. All right, now that the cleaning's out of the way, let's get started priming this room. Some things to consider before you start priming is wearing lighter colored clothes, so that way if you get any on you, it's not very noticeable. And two, wear latex gloves or vinyl gloves, something to protect your hands from getting the primer on you. And the reason why I like to wear them is they keep my hands from getting dried out when paint gets on them. So I have a really bad problem with dry hands. And the next thing you need to make sure you do is shake your paint or stir your paint for about five or 10 minutes. 
That way it gets all the additives mixed up really well before you start. So that's very important to do. So now that the drywall is dust free and we patched all the little nail holes, it's time to go ahead and start priming the walls. So if you have new drywall like this room that you see here that I'm doing, I use what's called PVA primer. It stands for polyvinyl acetate. And what that is, it's a latex based primer that will absorb and seal into this new drywall. So if you don't have new drywall, any primer will be fine. But you could also use PVA for old drywall as well that already has paint on it. It doesn't really matter. And then what we need to do is get a cut brush. This is a two and a half inch cut brush made by the Purdy brand. And uh, this is a good cut brush. And I've already been painting today. That's why you can see it's already a little wet. But what we need to do is get it into a little hand pail. The paint pail I'm going to be using is the handy paint pail. And the reason why I like to use it is because it has these disposable liners. So after I'm done priming, I can just throw that away instead of having to clean it before I move on to a colored paint. But you don't have to have that, but that's what I prefer. If you want to buy any of these products, you can check out my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. If you do make a purchase through it, I get a small commission, but it's at no extra cost to you. So what I'm going to do first before I get started is obviously I need to get the paint in the paint pail. So I always use the hole because I don't use the whole bucket of paint all in one day typically. So if I open it up, it might get dried pieces all around the inside and I don't want that. So I usually just use the opening there. We're going to go ahead and pour that right into our paint pail. And I usually fill it up about three quarters of the way because I don't want it to be too full and it'll overflow. And now I just take the paintbrush and just brush the excess back into the paint bucket for later. All right, now that we got paint ready to go, let me show you how to cut in the primer. So it's very simple to cut in this primer. All we gotta do is dip our brush about an inch or so into the primer and place it into the crease where the walls meet each other in a corner and where the ceilings meet in the corner as well. And then just paint about two inches on each side of the crease. So not very complicated, but if you haven't done it before, you may not know that and you want to make sure you cover everything really well because the reason why we do this is because the roller can't get into far corners like this so you can only get about an inch or so away from the corners so we need to make sure we apply enough coverage that we don't have to get our roller right into that corner so it keeps you from scuffing up the inside corners of the wall too so very important well that's all there is to it and all you gotta do is go around the whole room and each corner and where the ceiling meets the wall, just make sure you cut that in. Now it's time to move on to rolling the primer on. What I like to use is an 18 inch roller and this is a Purdy roller, which is a brand. And it's also a half inch nap made out of nylon polyester. And the reason why I use half inch nap is because it tends to hold more primer on. I moved the 3 8 inch nap right when I go to the finished coats. But for now, half inch nap works well. And you also need to get a pail that matches your 18 inch roller if you're going to go this route. The first place I'm going to start priming is the ceilings because if you're rolling and there's a little bit of splatter, it hits the walls and then we can just smooth it out. So I'll always start on the ceilings. And because we're working above our heads, I got a little bit of safety gear I put on first. Let me show you that. What I like to wear when I'm painting above my head is a bunny suit. So it's just a simple white suit that keeps the paint from coming in contact with your clothes or skin. I'm not concerned really about my skin as much as I am my clothes. Not that these are expensive clothes or anything, but why ruin them if I don't have to? So this zips all the way up. And then what I like to wear is goggles. So first thing I do is pull the hood over. That's gonna cover up my head like so. And then I'm just gonna take these goggles and put them on like this. And now I can look up above my head and paint and not worry about splatter getting in my eyes. I know it might be overkill to some people, but my eyes are important to me. I want to start out by filling up my paint tray with primer. So again, be sure to shake up your primer first before you use it. So I already did. And now we just fill up our paint tray. And I try not to go overboard here. I fill it up about halfway full to three quarters. I don't want a bunch uh, getting onto the floor when I'm trying to get it onto the roller, but it looks like that bucket's pretty well empty. So that's all we're gonna get out of this one. 
So that's all there is to filling up your paint tray and be sure to clean off your bucket with a paintbrush. All right, so that looks good. And what I always do, always take a Ziploc baggie with me when I'm painting. I always place my brush into that baggie so that way it stays fresh until the next time I need it because you're not using your brush all the time when you're rolling. So let's go ahead and get to rolling this ceiling. So after you got your roller wet with primer, all you got to do is start in a far corner of the room and just go back and forth in a W pattern and just get the coverage you need as you go. And try not to push too hard. I always say push moderate amount when you're rolling. You don't have to kill it. So about like that and try to get in close to these corners here without scraping the wall opposing the corner that you're painting or priming. So about like that. So a nice W pattern. And it doesn't matter which direction you go, you can do a W pattern this way, or if you want to do your W pattern this way, it really doesn't matter. As long as you blend it in well as you go is the main thing. So this primer is not nearly as critical as your finished coats of paint. First fresh coat of primer is now complete. Now it's time to move on to the walls. Now that the ceilings are done, I can remove my goggles and this hood and replace it with my standard hat. So now it's time to address the walls. I'm going to go ahead and put a liberal amount of primer on my roller and then go ahead and start in this far end here next to the corner itself go ahead and roll on a nice layer of this primer and I try to get next to the insides of the corner here as close as possible without hitting into the other wall because it will scuff it up and what I like to do sometimes here if it seems to be close quarters I'll take my roller sideways and just roll it into the corner so that way I don't have to worry about the sides of my roller holder to uh, scuff up the wall. So it could be a little bit easier this way for some people, but it's definitely a little slower to do that. So anyways, after we get out of this corner, now we just continue that same W pattern across the whole wall like so. Again, none of this stuff is rocket science, but you got to follow the steps properly to get a good finish. So. Just keep going up and down the whole wall like so. And you want to blend it in really smooth like. So something like that. So do that same process around the whole room. The room now has one fresh coat of primer on it and now we got to let it dry before we move on to the next step. So it's been a few hours now. As you can see, the wall is more of a solid white than a blotchy look like it was when we first put the primer on. That's because the primer is made out of latex. When latex dries, it looks more solid. So now what we're going to do is I got a sanding pole here. It has 180 grit sandpaper on it. I'm going to go over the walls and the ceilings really light like this. The reason it's a good idea to go over it lightly with sandpaper is it knocks off any clumps of drywall dust or any raised paper on the drywall or anything of that nature. So it's really important to sand between coats of paint and primer. All right, so now that we got the room primed ready to go, it's time for a second coat. I'm not gonna show you me putting on the second coat because it's just like the first coat, but just make sure you do two coats of primer. Now that we got everything primed and ready to go, it's time to apply the final coats. So you want to start with the ceilings and the reason why that is when you're rolling overhead a little bit of splatter can come off the roller and that might get on the wall and you don't want that getting on your final coat so you want to apply your ceiling paint first. So the supplies you'll need is very similar to what you needed when you did the PVA primer except this time we got to use a flat paint that is solid white in this case. You can paint it whatever color you want, but typical ceiling paints is what you'll see here. I like to use this Valspar Signature Line paint, and this is ceiling paint plus primer. And as you can see, I'm just using solid white, and it's a super flat paint. So that's really what you want for a ceiling, is something that's super flat. All right, now that you know what I'm gonna be painting with, I'm gonna show you what I do first. Just like we did with the primer, you wanna go through with your handy paint pail, dip a little bit of paint onto your brush, and just stroke it right into the crease where the ceilings and walls meet. 
And the reason why you do that is because when you're rolling, you can't get right into that corner just like the primer. So be sure to go around the whole room and do that first. I just finished cutting around the whole ceiling using that cut brush and ceiling paint. So now I'm gonna go through with my 18 inch roller setup that I use with the primer, except this time I have a 3 8 nap roller. I just like to use 3 8 nap for the final coats. Half inch is fine, but that's just what I prefer is 3 8 on the final coats. But there's something very critical when it comes to rolling on ceiling paint that you must do that's different than the PVA primer. So as you can see here, I got a window shining light right through the room like this. So you want to make sure you roll towards the light of the window that's coming through. And the reason why you do that is because if you roll this way against the lighting, it's going to cast a shadow and you're going to see little roller marks where you went across the ceiling. So you don't want to do that. And if you're interested in learning how to spray a ceiling, check out this video link in the top right hand corner of the screen. That's me instructing on how to use a sprayer and a roller for that matter on how to paint ceilings. Okay, so I'm going to go through and roll all of these ceilings in this room. All right, first coat is now applied. So even though we primed these ceilings, we want to make sure we apply two coats of ceiling paint. I know the primer looks very similar to the ceiling paint, but it's very important to do two coats because there's always little areas that you miss that you just don't see until after it dries. So wait till it dries, apply a second coat, and then we'll be ready to do the walls. Next thing I'm gonna do is cut in around the ceilings using the actual paint that's gonna be used to roll on the wall. So this process again is called cutting in, and this is the part that gets a little intimidating to a lot of new painters, but it's not that difficult with a little practice. It's something you can pick up in no time. So the first thing we need to do is get paint in our handy paint pail. Another cool thing about this handy paint pail is there's a magnetic side to it so your brush can stick right to it so it doesn't have to be sitting in the paint when you're needing a rest. But another thing that you need to make sure you do is dab the brush in the paint. You don't want to scoop the paint up onto the brush. So you want to go ahead and just dab it just about a quarter inch to a half inch into the paint. You don't want a ton of paint on here because that's going to cause runs and everything else while you're trying to go across the ceiling. So first thing we got to do, go ahead and start in the back corner. And I'm going to go ahead and run about a quarter inch or so below the actual ceiling. So something like that. So I'm just going to get a base of paint started, kind of seal in that primer as I go across, something like that. And then I'll just wipe the excess paint off below. And now, as you can see, we're about a quarter to an eighth inch below the ceiling. So now we're going to go ahead and dab on a little more paint. Again, you don't want to be excessive here. And now we're just going to get a nice bead of paint and let a bristle of the brush roll right up to the ceiling. So something like that. And you're going to let it follow right against the crease of the drywall. So something like that. And then after you get that filled in, we want to go ahead, continue on to the next run. Something like that. And now fill in that last quarter inch here. So right like that. And it's pretty simple. And again, I've been doing this for years, so clearly I make it look easier than what a newbie would be, but it's really not that complicated, folks. But it's all in the technique of the painter. Not only do you got to cut around the ceiling, but also in the corners of the room too. So right in these areas. So here you can be a little more liberal with the amount of paint on your brush. So I'll go ahead and dip it in about an inch or so. And then we just cut along that corner like that.
As far as the brush goes, this is that same two and a half inch purdy brush that I used to apply the primer. And now what I do, as, since I got the first coat of the cut in done, I don't go through and do a whole other coat of the cut in. What I do, I let it dry for about an hour or so, and then look for blemishes in the cut in, and then I just kind of go over the blemishes. So then after I do that, I'm all set to start rolling paint. If you're wondering what I mean by blemishes, if you look here, this is where I first started cutting in. You can see it's a little lighter through here and it's darker here and right along the ceiling. So what I'll do is go through with a brush and just kind of hit this real quick. And then as you can see, we're pretty good right through here. So that way you don't have to go through and waste a lot of time recutting. Now it's time to start rolling the walls. And what I'm going to be rolling on is this Valspar signature line. And if you're wondering what color this is that I'm using, it's called First Star and the color is by Sharon Williams. All right, so now I got my paint tray here ready to go. So this time I'm going to take the lid off the five gallon bucket because we're not trying to pour it into that little handy paint pail. We're pouring it into this paint tray. So we're going to go ahead and pour it in a liberal amount, but you don't want to go hog wild here. So fill it up about halfway or so. All right, that looks really good. And now if you're wondering what size roller I'm using, I'm using that 18 inch purdy roller, but this time instead of a half inch nap, I'm using a 3 8 inch nap. I like to use a 3 8 inch nap on my finishes. So that's just something you might want to keep in mind. When I say finishes, I mean the final coats of the actual color paint I'm using, not the primer. All right, let's get to rolling. The first thing you gotta do is get paint on your roller. So you simply just gotta keep rolling it down into the tray until you get an adequate amount onto the roller. And it looks like that would be a good place to start right here. So we'll go ahead and place this onto the wall. And always give a little twist like you see there, that way no paint runs off the roller, but this is pretty high quality paint, so it doesn't want to fall off the roller that easy anyways. All right, now that we got paint on our roller, the first thing I do is just start in any corner, and we're gonna to wanna to roll right straight up and down at first. And what I do here, I kind of cut into the cut with the roller. So as you can see, we got it cut into this corner. So what I'm gonna do is just try to roll as close as I can to that corner without rubbing the side of the roller holder against the wall and scratching it. So you'll just wanna go ahead and at first, like I said, get as tight as you can into that corner. So just like this, as you can see, I'm staying away about an inch or so from the actual corner itself and just rolling in to where we cut in earlier. Something else you may want to do if you're more comfortable is you can turn your roller sideways and roll into the corner like this and that way it ensures that you get as tight as you can without scuffing up the opposing wall. But I typically just roll as close as I can. Now that I rolled as close as I can up to that corner, I'm going to go ahead and apply a liberal amount of paint to my roller and now we can really start covering some square footage. So let's go ahead and put a liberal amount on our roller. And we literally just go straight up and down to where we cut in. And then we kind of go in a W pattern and just kind of inch our way over and blend it all in about like that. And Rolling a wall isn't very complicated at all either. It just takes a little practice and with a little practice you're going to become a pro at it in no time. So now you literally just redo what we did there around the whole room. Something I wanted to point out is this is a new construction house, like I said, and the outlets are not installed. So I can roll right over this with no problem. But if you're in an older house and you took the plate cover off, what you need to do is take a brush and paint around the opening for the outlet. 
So that way you just roll right around it instead of right over the outlet. And another thing I wanted to tell you about this particular job is this wall is going to get shiplap on it. So that's why I didn't cut it in around the ceiling or right in these edges. So I just wanted to point that out. This room now has its first coat of paint on and it looks really nice. Now I'm going to let it dry for about four hours and then apply the second coat. If you want to know how to use an airless sprayer to paint these walls, check out this video. It'll help you out.